Hey folks, see you Rachna Ranade here and I welcome you all to a very very interesting video. Yes, I agree that it has been a long time since I did a fundamental analysis of any specific stock and that is why we are here today. We are going to do the fundamental analysis of a banking stock specifically focusing on the latest quarterly results that have been declared by that bank. Which bank is that going to be? We are going to discuss that but before we move on, a big shout out to Mr. Sunil and Mani for their wonderful comments. Well, the stock that we are going to discuss today is Bank of Maharashtra. Well, this bank has a diversified product and services portfolio and they cater to various sectors, be it retail, be it agriculture, be it MSME, be it corporates and so on. But if I were to directly jump into the financials, I think that will not be fair because directly I'll start talking about, you know, balance sheet numbers, P&L numbers, cash flow and whatnot. Before that, let's try and analyze certain numbers outside these financial statements so that you get a better understanding. So first, let's understand about the customer base of this bank which is approximately 2.96 crores if i were to talk about the networks currently the bank has a wide network of branches with almost 2203 full service domestic branches and maximum number of branches are in industrial states like maharashtra and gujarat it is also it has also opened 450 branches in the last three years and they are planning to expand their network to 2500 branches by the end of march 2024 if i'm talking about the number of ATMs, they currently have 2,330 ATMs, 60 customer service points and 3,432 business correspondents as at March 2023. If I'm talking about the various employees that they have across various articles as at March 2023, the number is 12,977. Well, now that we have understood about certain core points about this bank, now let's move on to the amazing history of this bank. Let's start the history of this bank with a fun fact. The bank got registered in 1935, that is, this is even before the formation of Maharashtra in 1960. In 1944, that is, during the pre-independence, it obtained the status of a scheduled bank. In 1969, Bank of Maharashtra got nationalized during the first lot of nationalization. In 1974, the deposit base crossed 100 crores and in 2000, it crossed 10,000 crores. In 2004, it got listed both on BSC and in NSC. In 2012, the total business crossed 150000 crores in 2016 it crossed 250000 crores in 2021 crossed 3 lakh crores and in 2023 crossed 4 lakh crores now let's start with the quantitative fundamental analysis of this bank. As I mentioned in the earlier section of the video, we are going to refer to the latest quarterly reports that have been published by the bank. As in how we keep on talking about the figures, I'll also tell you about the relevance of that specific parameter and how we need to interpret that, right? So let's get started. Have a look at this chart. Here we can very clearly see that the advances of the bank are in an increasing trend and if you see on a YOY basis, it has increased by 29.49% which is a good increase in the advances. If you also look at the C to D ratio, that is the credit to deposit ratio, you can see that it has grown on a YOY basis. Basically, what does this ratio tell us? It tells us about the ability of the bank to convert the deposits into advances. So remember this thumb rule, higher the better. Now, if we move on to another point here, we are going to focus on the CASA parameter. What is CASA? CASA is current account, saving account. Now, if this number is higher, it's always better for the bank. Why? Because they have an access to the funds at a lower rate and they will have an ability to lend it out at a higher rate. Now, even though there is a widening gap between the interest rates of saving account and time deposits, the CASA has grown by 6.77% on a YOY basis. But if we check the CASA percentage as a percentage of total deposits, we can see that it has dropped from 57.85% to 53.38%. Now the bank was still able to keep this CASA percentage as a percentage of the total deposits above 50%, which is still amongst the best from as compared to other PSU banks. Now let's move on to the next four parameters, which are like not specific to banking analysis, but which can be used for analyzing any company. The first one out of that is operating profit. The second one is net profit. What is the logic behind this? How do we an analyze or interpret this? Simple thumb rule, higher the better. Okay. Operating profit basically tells us how much profit they are able to generate from, a, from their core operations. And if you see for Bank of Maharashtra, on a YOY basis, their operating profit has increased by 57.36% and also it is an increasing trend. 
plus if i'm talking about net profit same same point you can see that is also in an increasing trend the yoy increase is 136.48% what is the again final thumb rule to be remembered higher the better right moving on to the another two ratios one is roa that is return on assets the second one is roe how do we interpret that simple higher the better and if you see for bank of maharashtra both are increasing and also you can see the latest one for roa is at 1.32% roe is 26.32% also one more point currently uh, i mean for financial year 22 23 they have recommended a dividend of 13% moving on to two more parameters one is nii that is net interest income and one is nim that is net interest margin again thumb rule for both is higher the better now if you see for bank of maharashtra nii is in an increasing trend and if you see the yoy growth it has, it is at 35.66% if you see nim percent that is also in an increasing trend and it stands at 3.78% i believe that the bank is able to maintain a healthy nim because of two parameters possibility number 1 could be the higher share of casa to casa per, percentage to the total deposit and the second one could be the efficient treasury management because of which the nim is at a higher rate let's move ahead with three more parameters one is cost of deposit percentage we are going to talk about cost of funds as again a percentage and third one is cost to income again in percentage terms okay now again how do we have to analyze this cost of deposits ideally lower the better second cost of funds again lower the better and same third one cost to income same logic right it has to be lower the better let's have a look at bank of maharashtra charts if you see here cost of deposits cost of funds both are in an increasing trend now how wh why could this be this can be seen by the fact that rbi is only increasing the rates since march 2022 now we have to also analyze one more important point if you see here cost are increasing but if you remember in the previous slide or just before that we discussed about nim also the nim is also in an increasing trend now what does this indicate this indicates that bank is able to pass on this to the customers and here you can see also cost to income ratio is decreasing currently it stands at 38.34% and which is one of the best amongst the psu banks and i believe that this decrease in the cost to income ratio is because of the efficient management of resources by the bank now let's move on to further three important points one is gnpa nnpa and pcr one of my team members the other day was saying ma'am let's check ganpa and nanpa it's not ganpa and nanpa aise kuch nahi hota gnpa is gross non performing assets nanpa nnpa is no, net non performing assets and pcr is the provision coverage ratio now if you ask me how do we analyze this gross non performing assets and net non performing assets both lower the better that shows that in simple terms commerce people will understand bad debts are on a lower side okay so both have to be lower lower the better and if i'm talking about provision coverage ratio here you are providing for these non performing assets and that is why it's like higher the better right if you have understood this let's understand how bank of maharashtra is placed if you look look at this chart both gnpa and npa both are in a decreasing trend and net npa stands at 0.25% if i'm talking about such levels of uh, low net npa this gives a clean slate to the bank as to add quality assets to its balance sheet and if i'm talking about pcr now pcr you can see that this is in an increasing trend currently it stands at 98.28% now again higher pcr as i mentioned that tells us that in the future they may not be required to make more and more provisions against the bad debts so always as i told you you have to remember higher the better let's go on to the final parameter that is a capital adequacy ratio here again you have to remember the thumb rule is higher the better if you see for bank of maharashtra it has been increasing and it stands at 18.14% as at march 2023 and this is way above the regulatory requirement of 12% this shows that the bank is adequate buffer to stomach future uncertainty Ha huh, what we did right now was analyzing 15 parameters 15 plus parameters i can say for bank of maharashtra and not only only we discussed the numbers we also understood how to interpret these data points right now what we are going to do next now we are going to choose some 6 7 parameters and we are going to compare bank of maharashtra with other psu banks but what i have done is i have compared only with top 5 banks based on market capitalization okay plus whatever numbers i have taken for these top 5 uh, banks by market capitalization psu banks again all these are taken from the march 2023 investor presentation of these respective uh, banks right so for that 
have a look at this chart if you see if i'm comparing bank of maharashtra with state bank of india bank of baroda punjab national bank canara bank and union bank i've compared this based on which parameters net interest margin net npa provision coverage ratio casa current account saving account advances growth cost to income and price to book valuation now if you remember we have discussed all of these while we were checking the previous sections of the video right if i'm checking nim nnpa pcr casa advances growth cost to income in all these respects bank of maharashtra is at number one position but as far as price to book value valuation is concerned punjab national bank is at number one position so if we see out of seven at six places bank of maharashtra stands at the first place well i hope you enjoyed the broad analysis of bank of maharashtra based on 15 plus parameters we also learned how to do a peer comparison but always remember that whenever you are taking any investment decision you have to do your own research we call that as dyor do your own research if you loved this video don't forget to share this video with your friends don't forget to smash the like button and if you want to if you want me to cover any other company for fundamental analysis don't forget to put down your comment in the comment section below if you want to learn more about how mr Wall and buffet made millions and millions of dollars click here and if you want to know more about us debt crisis you can click here till then take care chehan and bye bye